Hello, everyone. This is the last FRQ you had from Unit 1. Oh, it's 4-8, Unit 1 random, not based off of a video. Question 1. So question 1 was just straightforward. It honestly didn't have anything to do with your the experiment that was set up. So we'll go right into this, and then we'll take a look at the experiment. So question 1, it said, um, a difference between prokaryotes and eukaryotes is seen in the organization of their genetic material. Discuss, so we need to talk, right? Discuss means not make a list, but try to make it in sentences. Um, the organization of genetic material in prokaryotes and eukaryotes. So I'm not sure how you were supposed to know this, but you needed to have four differences. It was worth four points. And I'm not, I don't see anywhere in here other than just knowing it was part of question one that you had to have four, but this one was worth four points. And these are the ways that you could have earned your points. Um, each bullet mentioning both prokaryote and eukaryote would have been a point, right? So prokaryotes, no introns, eukaryotes having introns, that would be a point, okay? All right, so let's look at some responses. First response, okay. Um, eukaryotes have nuclei which hold their genetic material. Prokaryotes do not have a nuclei and their genetic material is free floating. Their capsule shape. Both organisms use DNA to store their genetic instructions, but prokaryotes have both chromosomes and plasmids, circular forms of DNA. Well, and this one was so close. Well, eukaryotes only have a double helix chromosome form of DNA. So they got the point for no nucleus and nucleus, right? And then this one, they were really close. They had the circular plasmid in the prokaryote, but the double helix, they both have double helixes because they both contain DNA. So that doesn't count as the linear point for this. This person earned one point. So we're looking for prokaryotes have circular DNA, eukaryotes have linear. Okay. All right, this person got the full por four points. In the prokaryotic cell, DNA is found outside of the nucleus, but in eukaryotic cell, DNA is found within a nucleus. Um, I gave them this point, even though it says outside, they don't have a nucleus, so I should have said no nucleus. Um, eukaryotic cells have histones, while prokaryotes do not. Prokaryotes are usually one chromosome, while eukaryotic is more than one. Eukaryotes have introns, while prokaryotes do not have introns. Prokaryotes' DNA is normally circular, while the DNA of a eukaryote is straight or linear. Notice they didn't give me a bolded list. Um, it was sentences for each comparison. Very easy to score. Full four points. Okay, let's take a look at question two. Let's look at the question first. And, all right, let's take a look here. So question two says scientists studying transcription in yeast created an experimental strain that produced a modified RNA polymerase containing a single amino acid substitution. Scientists determined the maximum elongation rate during transcription with and without the modified RNA polymerase enzyme. That's this. Okay, that's that, their first data table. So they figured out how fast the wild type does transcription, and then they figured out how fast that mutant strain does um, transcription for elongation. All right, then it says, um, for question A, describe the structural components of RNA nucleotide monomer, explain the role of RNA polymerase during transcription. We don't even need this data table for that. So let's go back to our question. All right, so for this one, to earn a point, um, they had to describe the RNA nucleotide and then describe what RNA polymerase does. So um, this person has zero points earned. Phosphorus, ribose, nitrogen base. Um, this is not a description, that is a list. Okay, so describe means tell me about it. Okay, so this is not a point. Even though all three of those things were in the scoring guide, it needs to be a description. We really have to start being careful with these describe verbs, because if you're writing just statements like this, you're not going to be earning points. 
And then the second, for the second part, RNA reads the template strand of DNA and adds matching nitrogen bases to the mRNA, matching A with U and C with G. This is great, except we're not looking for RNA. RNA is not reading it. Um, it is the RNA polymerase that is reading that template strand of DNA. So this was lacking the, the major part talking that this was RNA polymerase doing the work here. And this is a full point, uh, simple response. The three structural components that make up an RNA nucleotide monomer are a sugar, a phosphate group, and a nitrogen base. That counts as a description, okay? Um, the sugar and the phosphate group make up the backbone of the strand while the base is attached to each other in the middle. That's a description, okay? So that's a full point there. All right, and then next we have in transcription, RNA polymerase copies a DNA sequence into an RNA sequence. That's another point because they mentioned DNA being converted into an RNA sequence and they mentioned the RNA polymerase. So good job on that one. So some keys to this one when you're describing, please make sure you are describing and make sure that your, ver your wording is correct here, that this is talking about what RNA polymerase actually does. I, another one, this was earned uh, full points. RNA is made of the nitrogenous bases A, G, C, and U, a ribose, 5-carbon sugar, and a phosphate group. Good description. RNA polymerase is an enzyme that copies a DNA sequence into an RNA sequence during transcription. Perfect. Okay, that's a great response. All right, so let's go back to 2B. Let's go back and look at the experiment here. Okay, so question two, part B says, identify the dependent variable in the experiments, identify control group um, missing from the second experiment and justify the need for this control group. Okay, so the dependent variable, all you guys have to do for this is go to the y-axis of the graph. So what are they measuring along this y-axis? Um, what I would have done is written the whole thing, maximum elongation rate, nucleotides per second, that's your dependent variable. All right, next, it says what's missing. And what they didn't have here, here is, is our regular, right? And then we have um, a treatment in the second experiment. They said the compound amanitin, which is commonly found in toxic mushrooms, is a specific RNA polymerase inhibitor. Inhibit binds to the RNA polymerase active site and inhibits transcription. In a second experiment, the scientists treated the wild type in the experimental strains with the Samaritan, Amanitin, and recorded the maximum elongation rate. Error bars represented. So here's a second experiment. And what they were missing was a treatment to look back at that had not, what you have to do is say, okay, what are they treating this with? Okay, they're treating it with Amanitin. They, they're missing a control. They don't have a group where they did not treat it with amanitin. So they have nothing to compare it to. So what we're looking for is identify a control group missing from the second experiment. The control group will be one that they did not treat. So you have to say to yourself, what exactly were they treating this stuff with? And they were treating it with that amanitin from the mushrooms, right? And the mushrooms block the active site. That's what make them, makes them toxic, right? All right, so let's look at some student responses for this one. All right, so um, elongation rate, no amitin solution to be able to see how much the amitin affects elongation rate. This is too, this is like too short. What, these need to be complete sentences, so identify. And, Elongation rate isn't the complete thing off of the y-axis. So this is not enough here, right? No amitin solution. So they were trying to say that that was the control group. Um, and it wasn't no amitin solution. It's that they weren't being treated. They needed to look at one that wasn't being treated. And then to use it for comparison, how does it act normally without amitin and to see how it actually affects that elongation rate, okay? So this is to see what um, amitin actually does. Now, too brief, right? So this needs to be um, this needs to be at least sentences, 
right? So we need to have more information here. Okay. All right, dependent variable experiment is the elongation rate of mRNA. Good, full sentence. Although it is, it is in the first experiment, because the experiments are separate from one another, in the second experiment, there would need to be a trial without the treatment of amitin. So that's where it was tricky. In the first experiment, it looks like they did it without, measured it, and then they did it again. But this was a separate experiment. This is because it would show if there's truly a significant decrease in elongation due to m amitin. Okay, perfect answer. That one earned two points. 2C, um, I think one person earned the points on this one. So let's look at what 2C wants. 2C got a little bit tricky. So for 2C, they say, describe the effects of amanitin on the maximum elongation rate for the wild type and modified RNA polymerases. Okay, determine the ratio of the average maximum elongation rate for the modified RNA polymerase compared to the wild tribe strain RNA polymerase in figure one. Okay, so what they're asking you to do is compare figure two to figure one. Okay, so um, in order to compare the effect, they want you to look at figure one and compare it to figure two. So let's go back to our our graph here. Okay, so if we look at the experimental strain with no amanitin and one with amanitin, we see overlap. And I had to put a like a line in here to even see this. So we can see that the amanitin is having no statistically significant effect on the elongation rate of the experimental strain, okay? The wild type strain, okay? I mean, we have, we have definite overlap here. So there's no statistically significant difference between the experimental without and the experimental with, okay? If we look at um, the wild type strain, we can see no overlap, okay? That means they are statistically significantly different. That means that amanitin is having an effect on the wild type strain, but not on the experimental strain. And you had to say that this is due to error of our overlap. Okay, so you had to go back to the graph and say, okay, if I were to draw a line here, I can definitely see that there's overlap here, meaning no statistically significant difference, and then no overlap here, meaning they are statistically uh, different. Okay. This is one of the first times I've ever seen where you have to compare across two different graphs. Okay, so this is definitely a little bit different. Okay, so this person earned a point for the rate, the rate being one, one to six, okay? So the, the ratio of average maximum elongation rate for RNA polymerase compared to the wild type strand is one to six, okay? All right. Okay, so the description had to, um, a decrease in maximum elongation rate is not comparing anything. Okay, so we're not talking about error bar overlap and we're not talking about a uh, comparison back to that graph. This person earned one point. Um, amanitin causes both types of RNA polymerases to decrease significantly in elongation rate of mRNA. Um, it, and it's, they have the ratio point here. They both don't have a statistically significant difference. Only the wild type does. So not both of them. All right, this person I think is the only one that earned the two points. Amanitin causes a statistically significant decrease in maximum elongation rate for the wild type. That's the one where we didn't see um, error bar overlap. However, it does not affect the maximum elongation rate for modified RNA polymerases. And because of this statistically significant difference, we can give the point for that. And then the ratio for maximum elongation is one to six. So this person, I believe, was the only person that earned this point. Okay. So definitely make sure in your answer you are referring to that error bar overlap. And last but not least, 2D. In general, everyone did really well on this one. Okay. 
So null hypothesis. So we have to say um, the modified RNA polymerase would not affect the maximum elongation rate. Okay, so that means we would not see any difference. We're predicting that no difference would be seen. Um, and this is for experiment one. Okay, so we're looking for the RNA polymerase. In experiment one, they did not use that amanitin. Okay, so this is in experiment uh, one. Change in amino acid will provide no statistically statistical difference in maximum elongation rate. Point. Because there's a change in the amino acid sequence, that also means there's a change in the R group. The R group could interact differently and bind differently to change the shape of the enzyme and the function. Now, the trick for part two, um, you had to say that it was going to be changing the active site. The active site is what's making that enzyme work. So this person got 0.1 but not 0.2. All right, the next one. The null hypothesis would be if RNA polymerase was modified with a single amino acid substitution, there would be no, no significant difference between the modified strain and a wild RNA polymerase strain. Perfect. However, this null hypothesis does not seem supported. The amino acid substitution seems to cause the modified RNA polymerase to perform at a slower rate in elongation than the wild type strain. This could be because the active site of the enzyme may have changed shape, causing it to bind to less nucleotides than the wild strain normally does. And that was a full two points. Okay, so um, you guys are doing really well. This was a very tricky free response. We wanna make sure that we're going back and referring to error bar overlap and being really careful to answer what the question is asking. All right, thank you. You guys have a nice day.